The cannabis plant, a native to Asia, has been used for millennia as a mind-altering drug and a medicine for many ailments. Prohibition in the U.S. forced it underground but never prevented its cultivation or hybridization. At San Diego Salk Institute, Professor Todd Michael genetically sequenced 193 strains of cannabis to understand just what it's capable of. We have this very important crop that people have been using for thousands of years and we know very little about it. it. Turns out though, what we discovered is that the plant has a massive amount of potential that we have really just started to understand and really build the tools to be able to tap into. Illumina, which is our sequencer in town. Michael shows us around a small lab at Salk where his genetic sequencing machines reside. He says he's sequenced thousands of plants and cannabis is the most interesting and various. And he wants to understand the plant's many ways of making cannabinoids. Those are the chemical compounds that can alter our mind and body. The best known is THC, which makes you high. But there are many more cannabinoids created by a common molecular pathway. What Michael calls the end product requires lots of acronyms to describe. THC, CBD, CBG, CBC, all these cannabinoids that we want, we can actually manipulate this pathway and we can make many different types of cannabinoids that right now we call minor cannabinoids. Those cannabinoids, which are not psychoactive, interact with a set of human receptors called the endocannabinoid system. Some minor cannabinoids have proven to be pretty powerful. CBD can control epileptic seizures. Anecdotal evidence shows it helps treat anxiety and chronic pain. UC San Diego recently studied whether CBD could reduce disruptive behaviors in boys with severe autism. Igor Grant, director of UCSD's Center for Medicinal Cannabis Research, said the results of the study were not definitive, but they were encouraging. About two-thirds of the kids who got CBD were rated as improved overall by the clinicians, and only a third that got placebo were seen as improved overall. The search for effective health-enhancing cannabinoids has taken root in the private sector. Phylos Bioscience, based in Oregon, breeds many varieties of cannabis that can be grown from seed. Alicia Holloway is the chief scientific officer at Phylos. She says one cannabinoid with a pretty good story is THCV. That's THC minus a couple of carbon atoms. It's been called diet weed because it gives you kind of the opposite of the munchies. Holloway says Phylos did a clinical trial that did show THCV was energizing and reduced the appetite. So they bred a plant with plenty of it. And worked on identifying genetic markers that could help us select for plants with higher levels of THCV. And then we developed those Um, We developed those plants that now have 20% THCV. There is a lot of excitement around cannabis these days. Hemp production is legal again thanks to changes in the U.S. Farm Bill. Igor Grant at UCSD wonders if cannabis deserves all the attention. He says many plants have molecules that could interact well in humans. Maybe we've discovered them in pot because its psychoactive effects have captured our attention. And we as humans, I mean, throughout recorded history, have sought to change how we feel, right? Uh, And so cannabis is one way to do that. Alcohol is another way to do that. Opioids are yet another way. Plant geneticist Todd Michael disagrees. He says the relationship between cannabis and cannabinoid receptors in the brain and the body make this plant different. I would say that it's more than just that we like to get high. I would say there's this very intimate relationship with, between this plant that can make something that invades not only our consciousness, but also our well-being. Michael says cannabis is also easy to grow, producing high yields with minimal treatment. That means it's good for producing other things like hemp fiber or cooking oil. Thomas Fudge, KPBS News.